Hi and welcome to One Medicine. Today we'll be talking about the topical and systemic therapies available in psoriasis. Psoriasis is a chronic papillosquamous disorder with remissions and exacerbations. So it is a very long standing which is chronic papillosquamous disorder wherein we see a lot of scales formed in this disorder with remissions and exacerbations. So there will be waxing and waning goes seen in this disease. The disease has both genetic and environmental factors which play a part in the etiopathogenesis. It presents as a chronic bilaterally symmetrical dry erythematous well-defined scaly papules and plaques. So the lesions that we see, the primary lesions are papules and plaques which have uh, erythematous and they are bilaterally symmetrical usually. And there is this phenomenon called as Cobner's phenomenon which is uh, present here. It is also called as isomorphic phenomenon. I have discussed about this in my previous videos. You can go back and have a look at it. Etiopathogenesis. Psoriasis is a chronic relapsing disease which is characterized on the cellular level. If you see, there will be hyperproliferation and abnormal differentiation of the keratinocytes. So, there is increased keratinocyte proliferation which is happening here. Along with that, there is lymphocytic infiltration uh, of T cells in the epidermis and endothelial vascular changes are seen in the dermis. So, the, the dermal vessels also will undergo changes like there will be angiogenesis, there will be dilatation, high endothelial venule formation. So, there is increased keratinocyte or the epidermal cell growth here there's increased proliferation along with that t-cells come and infiltrate them along with that there will be dermal vessels which are normally present would have undergone changes like there will be dilatation there will be to increased toxicity and then there will be angiogenesis as well the psoriasis is considered to be a T-cell mediated chronic immune inflammatory, autoimmune inflammatory disorder. There are certain HLA alleles also which are associated here and uh, we have HLA B13 B17 and BW16 an important one is uh, CW0602 actually uh, CW0602 is an important gene other genes that are there are source 1 to 9 genes which are again important uh, genetic factors involved here uh, there are certain steps in the pathogenesis here. What happens here is in our epidermis, we have this, this is supposedly the epidermis of the skin. We have certain cells called as antigen presenting cells which are located in the epidermis. So these help in maintaining the skin immunity. So for immune regulation, these cells are present. If there is any antigen exposure on the epidermis, the antigen presenting cells will recognize the antigens. These antigen presenting cells the antigen presenting cells will engulf the antigen and it, it will engulf the antigen and it will take the antigen inside itself and then these antigen presenting cells will go to the lymph nodes. So in the lymph nodes these antigen presenting cells put the antigen that was there will present it to the T cells. Here we have the T cells but these T cells are not differentiated T cells they are very naive and immature T cells. So these T cells on exposure to the antigen they will undergo activation. So in psoriasis, we basically have Th1 type of activation which is present. So, T helper cells and T helper cell 1 related uh, cytokines will be released. And they will and uh, these T cells also will differentiate to form memory T cells and they also will form effector T cells. Both of these T cells will go to the circulation. They will be released inside the circulation and through the dermal vessels, they will come into the dermis. Through from the dermis, they'll migrate upwards and they go towards the epidermis. So, what do we have now? We have T cells which are differentiated in the epidermis. We have so there are inflammatory changes seen in the epidermis and dermis as well here. Okay. So after that, if there's any second exposure to the antigen, on second exposure, what happens? There are already memory T cells which are present in the epidermis. So these memory T T cells which are already there in the epidermis will get activated very quickly. So there'll be a very quick response here seen, and then these memory T cells will produce certain inflammatory cytokines and this is the one which will cause the lesions of psoriasis. So that is how a psoriasis lesion is formed. Okay, so activation of dendritic cells in the epidermis takes place firstly. Then we have antigen presentation by dendritic T cells to the T cells in the lymph node. Then binding of the T cell receptor, the receptors in the T cells and the receptors in the dendritic cells will interact with each other. The dendritic cells are nothing but the antigen presenting cells here. There will be co stimulation between the T cells and dendritic cells. Then immunological synapse formation will take place, wherein this again is an important step in the pathogenesis because there are certain drugs which will inhibit this 
immunological synapse formation right then the t cells will get differentiated and clonally they proliferate and they will migrate to the dermis and then upwards to the epidermis certain markers or certain uh, integrins are there which will help in attracting the t cells towards the epidermis which is called as epidermotropism then we have reactivation of t cells in memory t cells and then uh, inflammatory response is seen because of reactivation of memory t cells again on second exposure there are certain triggering factors uh, in psoriasis we have uh, said cobner's phenomenon before it is an isomorphic phenomenon where you see the lesions are uh, similar to the lesions of the disease like if in psoriasis you see cobner's phenomenon lesions which are similar to psoriasis will be seen in uninvolved site of the person right that is cobner's phenomenon which is seen here then we have uh, seasonal variation that is in winter you see psoriasis cases will be increased in pregnancy uh, there will be remission and then after pregnancy there can be exacerbation but there is a variant of uh, psoriasis called as impetigo herpetiformis herpetiformis which is a pustular variant of psoriasis which happens in the third trimester so this is a very uh, serious condition not a very serious not a very grave condition but the treatment refer, differs from uh, the uh, other normal patients then uh, emotional stress also can precipitate psoriasis infections uh, can precipitate psoriasis certain drugs uh, drugs again is important we have uh, calcium channel blockers ace inhibitors lithium then there is uh, nsids also can cause precipitation of uh, Uh, psoriasis then uh, chloroquine which is an anti malarial again can cause psoriasis right and then your sunlight uh, certain types of psoriasis which are called photosensitive to psoriasis can be exacerbated by sunlight then alcohol smoking obesity is associated then hiv infection there will be increased risk of developing this clinical variants uh, this is the classic lesion of psoriasis where you see erythematous well defined plaque with scaling you see na so this is the characteristic lesion other variants are we have chronic plaque psoriasis guttate psoriasis guttate psoriasis is uh, where in erythematous papules and pustules which are seen there dew drop like lesions would be seen after the patient has got urti with streptococcus um, then you get this lesions then we have elephantine psoriasis where the patient will have huge hyperkeratotic scales the patient will have exfoliative psoriasis nothing but erythrodermic psoriasis then pustular psoriasis psoriasis of nails mucous membranes psoriatic arthritis so these are the different varieties of psoriasis present histopathology uh, if you see there is uniform parakeratosis that is retention of the nucleus and this increased uh, keratinocytes so this is the parakeratosis munros microapsis and spongiform pustules of cockroach so as i told you these inflammatory cells now they progress from the epidermal vessels and they go towards the epidermis so when they are there when these inflammatory cells are there in the spinosum uh, spinous layer they are called as pustules of cockroach if the same neutrophils are there in the uh, stratum corneum they are called as munros microapsis that is seen then there is absence of uh, granular layer regular elongation of the rate ridges see or you can see the regular elongation of the rate ridges and the camel foot appearance of them then these dermal papilla also would uh, would be along it so dermal papilla also is elongated like this and there is perivascular infiltrates being present here and uh, here uh, wherever the papilla is there no there will there'll be thinning of the epidermis so suprapapillary thinning also is seen treatment if you come to treatment per se there's no treatment which offers complete relief here you can't expect psoriasis to go completely but there can be relief of the symptoms so you can achieve remission and not complete cure so patient education regarding this is important and reassuring the patient uh, plays an important role you have to aim for initial rapid control and then you have to go for long term remission treatment both topical and systemic therapies are available there's no treatment to improve the quality of uh, the treatment is done to basically improve the quality of life of the patient because you see the a huge number of scales being present and itching associated with that which can cause uh, which in, which can disturb the quality of life of the patient you have to try to improve it better and then we have individualized treatment given here so topical therapy mainstay of therapy uh, in chronic plaque psoriasis and nail psoriasis and scalp psoriasis and palmar plantar psoriasis is the topical therapy commonly used topical therapies are um, emollients and keratolytics topical corticosteroids intralesional steroids vitamin d and its analogs tylenol tar salicylic acid vitamin e analogs okay these are the commonly used uh, uh, topical therapies available in psoriasis firstly about emollients uh, 
they help in loosening of the adherent hypokeratotic psoriatic scales which are present and they also help in facilitating better penetration of the drugs so once you remove off the scales the other drugs that you use for treating psoriasis will penetrate better and uh, they work better emollients are the they the greasy and they will hydrate the stratum corneum they will retain the water retain moisture therefore again minimizing features like dryness itching scaling fissuring would be reduced we have white soft paraffin and liquid paraffin which can be used you have to apply this uh, after immersion in water for a few minutes and then you use the emollients next is we have topical corticosteroids uh, these are the cornerstone of therapy in mild to moderate psoriasis when the psoriasis is limited you can go for uh, topical corticosteroids they have anti inflammatory action anti proliferative immunosuppressive vasoconstrictive effects so these are the mechanisms through which they act it is effective it is rap it has a rapid onset of action excellent patient tolerability is seen easy to use less expensive like other uh, topical therapies these are not messy these are not irritant so this helps us to uh, make this a cornerstone of treatment in psoriasis side effects again when there is uh, when there are advantages there are also disadvantages side effects would be atrophy striate telangiectasia folliculitis acne form eruption rosacea contact dermatitis tachyphylaxis adrenal suppression rebound flare systemic absorption glaucoma if applied on the eyelids so we have to deal with all of this to get that result but if to make sure that it does not happen this course is when it always have to weigh and then treat the patient So here we have low potency steroids which can be applied on the face, groin, axilla. Higher potency can be applied in palm, soles, thick keratotic lesions. We have foam uh, foams available these days which can be used on the scalp, limbs, and tronchial lesions. Um, when do we use topical steroids? We use it when the body surface area involvement is ten to twenty percent in mild to moderate uh, psoriasis. And uh, as a maintenance therapy, if the patient has had severe psoriasis, you treat it with systemic steroids. And then after that, uh, to ma- to maintain long term remission, you can use topical uh, therapies. So remember, not only oral steroids, even topical steroids have to be tapered and then stopped. Combination would be oral uh, retinoids, solarol, uh, cyclosporine, topical dithranol. So you can use com- in combination with the steroids. so you can use other drugs also so indications would be as i told mild to moderate psoriasis and severe psoriasis you can use as a long term therapy monotherapy for flexural psoriasis recalcitrant plaques you can use when do we not use topical steroids when there's macrotic bacterial fungal infection atrophy of the skin there's allergic dermatitis and pregnancy lactation we don't use in uh, these particular states Intralesional steroids is next. Triamcinolone astatine is a drug used here for intralesional steroids. It's used in uh, nail psoriasis and in pruritic. If the lesions are intensely pruritic, we inject uh, this into the lesions. Otherwise, you can use it in nail psoriasis. In nail psoriasis, nail matrix would be involved, causing pitting and leukonychia. To treat that, intramitracial injections can be given. Vitamin D analogs, uh, naturally occurring vitamin D3, which is 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3, is used here. We have uh, calcitriol, calcipotriol, and uh, calcitol present, which can be used. Mechanism of action is they will reduce the keratinocyte proliferation, enhance differentiation, inhibit T cell proliferation, decreases T cell infiltration, shift. So all of these uh, etopathogenesis role would be uh, depleted here. Uh, calcipotriol percentage is 0.05 percent that we get, which can use. It can be used for six to eight weeks. It is non-messy, non-staining, no side effects of steroids will be present. Side effects will be mild stinging, burning, and irritation will be present. Hypercalcemia, hypercalciuria can be present. So that's why you have to use only hundred to two hundred, hundred um, to one twenty grams per week has to be used. That's all because there is a risk of hypercalcemia and hypercalciuria. Okay. Close monitoring of serum calcium levels if the dose exceeds one uh, twenty grams per week. Serum it cannot be used with salicylic acid and UV exposure because it is inactivated by in the acidic medium and UV exposure will. Inactivate uh, calcipotriol. UVB can be used also. Combination with oral acetate and topical beta methazone can be used, and uh, with uh, methotrexate also calcipotriol can be used. Next topical therapy is uh, dithranol. A uh, dithranol is also called as anthralin arroba powder, goa powder. It is extracted from the bark of this arroba tree. Okay, it's called as chrysarobin. Mechanism of action is inhibition of DNA synthesis in epidermal cells. It will inhibit thymidine incorporation in human cells and binds to mitochondrial DNA and inhibits various enzymes. It releases free radicals, inhibits polymorphonuclear leukocytosis also. This anthraquinone is a compound which is responsible for burning, stinging, irritation. advantages high efficacy no systemic toxicity side effects would be brown stain the staining is one of the important side effects of uh, dithranol that's why it is not used by many patients contact dermatitis perirational irritation it is used in ingrams regimen and uh, since there is contact dermatitis we use it as a short contact therapy which is 1 to 2% anthralin applied in petrolatum to the psoriatic plaques and then allow it to remain for 30 30 minutes and then remove with o- olive oil Mycinol and butantrone are the derivatives of dithranol, uh, which don't have any staining property. 
combination of corticosteroids colta urea with diethanol can be used indication is in mild to moderate severe psoriasis it is not used in unstable pustular erythrodermic you should not use diethanol colta is also called as udutar uh, 2 to 5 percent topical it is available it is produced by destructive distillation of colta with other organic matter followed by its purification crude colta has 48 percent hydrocarbons 42 percent carbon and 10 percent water isoquinoline is the compound which is a psoriatic agent which is used here the mechanism of action would be it reduces the epidermal dna synthesis reduces mitotic activity in basal epidermis it also has got anti inflammatory action it is used in uh, regimen called as gokumans regimen safe therapy in pregnancy women immunocompromised patients irritation malodor folliculitis can be present benzpyrin is carcinogenic combination with this can be used salicylic acid is available as 2 to 10 percent ointment of it's a keratolytic drug it uh, it is used in mostly hyperkeratotic disorders. It will dissolve the interstellar bridges. It is not used in unstable psoriasis and erythrodermic psoriasis. You can't use salicylism as a side effect. Vitamin E analogs is tazoretin is the vitamin E analog. It was FDA approved in 1997. Down regulates keratinocyte differentiation and proliferation. Tazoretin 0.05 to 0.1% is available. Safe, no systemic toxicity, no photosensitivity and potency like steroids. Side effect is irritation, itching, peeling, erythema, dryness, burning, itching. Mild to moderate, you can use this, and it's not used in unstable erythrodermic and pustular psoriasis, allergic dermatitis, if it is present, and pregnancy lactation. Topical calcitonin inhibitors we have tacrolimus and pimicrolimus. They act by inhibiting the activation and maturation of T cells, interferes with function of Langerhans cells, vasophils, and mast cells. They prevent release of cytokines. Tacrolimus 0.1% and pimicrolimus 1% is available to use. Other topical therapies are occlusive dressing, topical methotrexate, penetration enhancers like lorocaprim. Uh, Meclorethamine, Teotipa, 5-fluoroacyl, Lomostin, Cyclosporin can be used. Topical capsaicin, topical lipooxygenase, topical protein kinase inhibitors like triflucarbon can be used.